Thanks so much for tuning in to Morning Live and going on to matters ANC related but KwaZulu Natal related as well. Now, two mayors from KwaZulu Natal appeared in court yesterday, this on charges of murder. Harry Gwala District Municipality Mayor Mluleki Ndobe appeared in court in connection with the murder of ANC Youth League Secretary General Cindy Somakaka, and that happened in 2017. And then the murder charges against Ndobe have provisionally been withdrawn uh, due to a lack of evidence at this stage. Now, the mayor of Newcastle, Ntutugo Mashaba, also appeared in court yesterday as he's linked to the assassination of the ANC Youth League's regional chairperson, Wandile Ngubeni, in 2016. And joining us now from our Durban studio is Kolani Dube, who's a political analyst from the Zubera Institute for Research and Development. Kolani, good to speak to you as always. Thanks for coming through. Uh, greetings, Sakina, as well as to the viewers. So we heard coming out of the ANC's Nazarek conference, the elective conference, um, the unity song being sung. And you still hear that song from time to time at ANC gatherings. But then you have two cases such as the ones that I've just mentioned in my introduction. And these are things that the ANC is being dealing with right now. And it speaks to intra-political violence of the worst nature where members, senior members of the organization are facing murder charges and that allegedly having been perpetrated against other members of the same organization. What does this say about the ANC? I, I think, uh, Sakina, what we have to ask ourselves, what are we dealing with here? Because all the tools of analysis that we might be applying to what we are dealing with that is termed as the ANC, we might find out that we are no longer dealing with the ANC. Because if you remember, the ANC was founded or was conceptualized on the basis of advancing and protecting the human rights. And in 1955, ANC made a social pact with the South African society. Hence, ANC claim that role to be the leader of society. Being the leader of the society, it means that is the, our torch bearer when it comes to morality and the ethical leadership. And so now, when you talk about the killings that are happening in the ANC, we have to ask ourselves, is this the ANC that the South Africans gave that responsibility to be the leader of the society, that ANC uh, that was bestowed upon its shoulders to advance and protect the human rights? The answer is very simple, is no. Why I am saying that? In the elite transition, or let me say during the elite transition, the ANC inherited a very corrupt system. And this system now is starting to ravage the, our society. And this system promotes money more than ethics, more than humanity, more than morality. Why uh, one has to argue that currently ANC is no longer the ANC that all of us, we thought that is the ANC that will take us to the so-called the promised land. These killings that are happening, they have become kind of normal things or normality within the ANC. Look at Marikana, look at life as it men, and the people who are at the receiving end are those that the ANC made the promise that they will be looked upon post apartheid but it seems as if these are the people who are at the receiving end and so if us as the society are at the receiving end of an organization that is supposed to protect us what will make us to be so alarmed if this same organization started to devour each other so are you saying this was to be expected and this is perhaps just, you know, another stage in a national, uh, a, a rational or should I say normal attritional uh, sort of evolution that's taking place? Look, Sakina, let me go back to Marikana. 
people were massacred. There was a commission. No one is arrested. No one is behind bars. We are from as life as demand. People were neglected. They died. No one is behind bars. And now again, number of comrades in the ANC have been alleged that they've been killing each other. No one is behind bars. And so this catch and release kind of a game that is happening in the ANC, it plays the judiciary, not especially the judiciary, the SAPS in a very awkward position because we as the society, we have to ask ourselves, can we really trust the SAPS? The answer is a very simple one. To what happened to Ndobe and the others, really we can't trust the SAPS except that we can only trust the judiciary. So what would you say is at the heart of these killings? And, and, and they're not peculiar to KZN. We've seen these in Mpumalanga, uh, which was at one stage known as the Wild West uh, because of the political killings in the province. And there have been killings in other provinces. Uh, you look at the Northwest province, etc. So what makes KZN so unique in this instance? Why does there seem to be such a focus on KZN and political killings at this time? I, I think one, what makes KZN to be under the spotlight is the fact that the person currently who had the SAPS, he comes from this province. Remember that Sakina Pegikele towards Nazrek was a kind of a person who was leading a particular faction. And post Nazrek, definitely number of people who lost, who were belonging to the other faction, they, they were not comfortable that this person who have been leading this particular faction will ever be fair when it comes to the issues of law and its observation. Indeed, it seems as if they are being proven correctly because look what is happening to the issue of Ndobe. How can you put someone behind cell for a week and then all of a sudden you don't have a case and you let him go? That is the violation of someone's human rights. And at the same time, for the past two weeks or a month, we've been hearing that the mayor of Etawini, Mamzandile Kumete, might be arrested. Can you imagine the devastation that is happening in that Kumete's family? And the woman is not just being arrested. And so that's why I'm saying that it seems as if the state machinery that is supposed to protect the South African citizens are being used again to fight ANC inside uh, Beckles. And that makes us as South Africans really not to be comfortable, not to be excited if we hear that a particular person has been arrested because we know that at the end of the day, that person is going to be released. So we are headed to an election on the 8th of May and the list processes have just been uh, concluded and those have been handed over to the Independent Electoral Commission. But now we see the ANC uh, seemingly not quite knowing what to do about people whose names appear on those lists, but at the same time may find themselves um, uh, accused of very serious crimes, uh, like the people you've just mentioned, the mayors you've just mentioned. And then the provincial executive was given the task of dealing with those matters. What do you make of that? And how do you think the ANC could have or should be dealing with this matter? Look, Sakina, it's a very simple thing. In, 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 the, in the world of thieves, no one is a thief. I think maybe that might be the argument that those who are being pointed as the rogues in that list would say, look, all of us who are tainted. And so if all of us who are tainted, who is not tainted? And so I think let all those guys who are in that list go to the parliament, but it's up to the South African citizen to make a moral, ethical judgment to that ANC list, just like in any other political uh, list that is being forwarded to the IEC.
But isn't there an expectation, as you alluded to in your opening remarks, that you do expect the party to take some form of leadership in setting certain ethical standards, if nothing else? I don't think that ANC currently, in that top six, there is a leadership. It's just a congregation of different factions. And so, in a congregation of different factions, you might find that see, that particular faction has got a leader and the other one has got the, and the other has got a leader. And so there is no homogeneous uh, and the same focus and the same mission in, 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 in that uh, uh, top leadership of the ANC. And so the ANC must accept that and the ANC must start to deal with that. And look at the ANC Guazulu Natal statement. They made premature statements uh, in relation to Ndobe and the mayor uh, from Newcastle. And now they, they have their eggs on their faces. And so the question that we have to ask ourselves is a very painful one. When Ndobe enter that ANC office today or tomorrow, because he's an innocent person, what are they going to say regarding the statement that they've issued, because the man has got all the right to stand and be elected, as well as to serve the ANC. And so I think the ANC is in a serious dilemma. Certainly is, because they're caught between a rock and a hard place, because there is, once again, given the perception that exists around these mayors and the allegations that have been leveled against them, there is an expectation, once again, for the ANC to be seen, uh, even if they are not acting, to be seen to be doing something about what seems to be a very serious situation. <laughs> you know, Sakina, what, what, what is really funny, towards Nazrek, Everyone was saying certain individual like DT, like Ace, they are not supposed to be the leaders of the ANC. And that's what makes Nkosa Zanezuma not to be the flavor of the month of the, of the so-called the moral and the ethical crusaders. But these guys today, they are there in the ANC and they are leading the ANC. And the stalwarts, 101 and the MK veterans, they are quiet. And so that's why I'm saying that the current ANC leadership is a problem to the ANC itself. And the sad part is Ndobe and as well as the doctor from Newcastle, as well as Sandy Somaka, the guys here in Guazulu Natal who are killing each other are young people. And so we, we have to ask ourselves, if the so-called the youth in the ANC are starting to kill each other, what is the future that is going to, to be for South Africa to have leaders who can simply be alleged that they've killed each other? And at the end of the day, the question of youth leadership in the ANC list and also to say there must be a new dawn where young people must lead this country is really starting not to sit well with number of people. Well, uh, Kolani Dube, thanks so much for your time and analysis this morning. Kolani Dube is a political analyst from the Zubera Institute for Research and Development, talking to us about the killings and also mayors in KwaZulu-Natal appearing in court on charges of murder. So that is where the ANC finds itself currently. We know that the uh, provincial executive will be holding a press briefing later on. SABC News will bring you that. And speaking of news, it's time for the 7 o'clock.